All right, so today I have a look at the new pair of 350, uh, not V2s, but this is a V1. And you could see we have uh, some turtle dove action. Now, the box is not the same as the original. I don't have the original box on me. I have to crawl through my little attic space and I'm not gonna go get it right now. But I will be doing a comparison between these and the OG joints right over here. Let me pull the other one out here. Big shout out to my buddy Sean for letting me borrow his pair because I struck out on Yeezy Day on the 350s. Uh, so I tried to get these turtle doves and um, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't actually succeed. So we do have a comparison, but the sizes are different for those wondering. So mine is the size nine right here in the dirty pair. And then the clean pair is a size 10.5. But one thing that I was reading about on the Adidas website when I was trying to buy this pair uh, is that the sizing is like snug on this one. So it says actually go half a size up on Adidas website. And for anybody that actually bought these, leave a comment and let me know, did you guys get true to size and are they too snug or not? Um, back in the day when these ones came out in 2015, I got them and you could see I actually removed my insoles in my pair, but I got a size nine instead of a 9.5 because they only offered uh, full sizes. So nine, 10 and 11 and so on. But uh, the size nine actually fit me just fine like a 9.5. So honestly, like I was okay with a size nine, but if I would have got a size nine in the new version, I guess that would have been too snug. So go true to size 9.5 or uh, go up to a size 10. One thing I will say is if you do have a problem with the sizing and they are a little bit too snug, uh, my first rule of thumb is always to possibly remove the insole and you'll be good. For the 350 V1s here, you don't actually need insoles because you're sitting really on top of the prime knit, but it's on top of the Adidas Boost that's encapsulated in the midsole right here. So Adidas Boost midsole in this crazy ribbed like uh, midsole like container. Pretty insane like when these came out again in 2015. Now this was one of the, the first pairs that I saw from the new Yeezy line from Adidas that I was like, okay, this is something I can get on board with. It looked pretty crazy. I love the overall natural tones of the upper and the crazy turtle dove, like whatever pattern, although it doesn't really look like a turtle dove to me, but still it's the name of the, the shoe. But um, I wasn't on board with the, the 750s and this was the very first one of the low top form where I was like, okay, this is cool. But do you guys think that they're gonna be releasing the 750s for Yeezy Day next year, 2023? Or do you think that this was a, a wrap for this year because Kanye was not happy about Yeezy Day even happening. And he also said that he didn't approve retros of some of the, the pairs that they actually brought back. So maybe he didn't even approve uh, them bringing back these 350s. To, and ultimately I think that Adidas is doing a smart thing by branding a day for Yeezy Day and then dropping all of the restocks. Now I have a video of some of my pickups from the restocks uh, that I will be posting later in the week. So go ahead and uh, subscribe and check out that video later because I, I did end up getting two pairs from the restock. But I wanted to do a direct comparison between these two uh, and uh, show you guys the side-by-side -side of the old and the new. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. it. Honestly, there's not much to compare because they they look identical. Like they look very, very similar to the real thing. Now I've been told time and time again that this pair that I have is fake. And of course it's just ridiculous to me because I got this one literally directly from Adidas. But, um, but this is something to make note of because now that this is here and we have a new wave of 350s, expect fakes to flood the market. So make sure you're buying from trusted sellers if you're on the market trying to get a pair of these. Otherwise you might get stung and get a fake pair. Uh, but uh, but just throwing that disclaimer out there because obviously both of these actually came from Adidas. This one from my own pair in 15 and this one in 2022 from my buddy Sean, he got it from Confirmed. That aside, we'll start off at the back again. You can see the pull tab on the back looks very similar with the red dash across it. Even the lineup on the back looks very much the same. And then also that midsole back here. And that's one thing that's different about the V1s than say the V2s. The V2s has a midsole that wraps up right here. So this is extra sticky as there's a little strip right here that comes all the way down and around the midsole. But for the old ones, they didn't have that. It was just encased around the shoe. And, and then you do have a couple pods on the bottom. You can see here and then also here that have that extra rubber traction on it. And it's pretty much the same again on this new version. The only difference that I could tell right off the bat, and that's maybe because mine is again, seven years old now or whatever, this rubber and this rubber is actually a lot stickier than the one that I have here. Maybe I just need to wash mine, but this is really like slippery in comparison. And again, it's probably just because mine's old and weathered and worn, but that is one difference is the rubber feels a little bit stickier. The overall pattern looks pretty much 
the same, but it's it's almost like the uh, elephant print from uh, Jordan Brand. Like it looks very much the same, but the black on this one stands out a little bit more. Basically looks like somebody just hit the bold button when they were on the computer versus this one. It looks a little bit thinner. So just again, side by side, a little bit bolder, a little bit thinner in the black kind of accents of the shoes. So that's one thing that I noticed. I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting. It is a little bit different. This is the OG again, this is a retro. Stitching down the middle looks pretty much the same uh, on both of them as well as on the toe cap right there. And the laces do look a little bit thinner on the retro pair. So here is the retro right here. And then here is my pair. So comparison they do look a little bit thicker on the uh, the og than on the retro not a lot and the same pattern and stuff so it's not a big difference but it is a little bit of a difference in the thickness i'd say the biggest difference between these two is this little patch right here now it could be because mine's again seven years old and it's a little bit more weathered and worn in but it's a little bit more nappy uh, suede right here with the easy uh, right on this one and then on the new ones you could see it's a lot like uh, not as napped as the, the ones that I have. So that is definitely a big difference. You could see the quality of the suede or the, the nap of the suede is much more on that than the retro that we just got. But it does say YZY on that the same. And then on the other shoe, it has a trefoil logo here. So you see trefoil, trefoil, and then on the other one, it says Yeezy. If I take out the insole on the new one, you can see the internal build looks very much the same as the uh, original ones here. And then also the lacing structure on the inside and just the overall way that the shoe is lined looks pretty much the same. The only difference that I notice is right along this little uh, suede patch right here, the perforation holes on the inside of this are actually a little bit bigger than on the other one. But again, that could just be because mine's completely worn in. That now infamous loose collar around the Yeezy 350s right here is pretty much the same as well on the retro pair that we just got. Uh, same exact kind of material along the piping. And that's pretty much it, to be honest. The casing looks the same. Like the shoe in general looks very, very much the same as what we would expect a retro of a shoe to represent. And honestly, what do you guys think about this retro? Like I think that some people are gonna look at Adidas and go, no, it's a cash grab. They need to make a little bit extra money. So they're gonna retro something that, uh, that is famous and popular and whatever else and get people like geeked up and hyped about getting a pair that's seven years old. But on the flip side of that, if Jordan Brand can retro another pair of Chicago ones, like for the 50th time, and you guys are super, super excited about that. No hate, everybody's, it's all love. Everybody wants the Chicago ones. But Adidas releases a retro that's only seven years old, but for the first time, they're retroing something that is like famed and loved as well. It's silly to me that it's getting any hate, if it's getting any hate at all, because it's driving down the prices of the originals. The original ones are incredibly difficult to keep DS. As soon as you wear these, the bottoms of the soles actually just get destroyed. So it's like you wear them or you don't wear them. Uh, there's no passing off, it's not worn once they're, they're worn. And maybe that's one of those things that people are gonna be excited about that they can get new pairs uh, so they don't have to buy used pairs or pay the piper and pay for the brand new pair that's too much money. So the fact that it's driving down the price, it's nothing new, it's just supply and demand and that's kind of the way that we expected it to happen on the new uh, version of this uh, this retro right here. So I don't know, I think that it's a good thing personally. It's nice to be able to see and I would love for them to retro the 750s for next year because I've never owned a pair of 750s and if the prices drive down even more on those, like maybe it's a shoe that I can give a try out. I'm, I'm an old gentleman now. Maybe uh, maybe I can work out those those uh, 750s and they might look okay on me. Uh, but honestly, I think it's it's kind of a good thing and they released a ton of cool uh, colorways and models uh, for Yeezy Day. It would have been cool to see a couple of newer ones drop, but we saw a lot of stuff, foam runners and Yeezy slides and 500s and I, it was it was crazy. It was a lot of stuff. And actually Yeezy Day was on my birthday, so kind of fun, August 2nd this year. And uh, so it's always fun for me to be able to remember Yeezy Day. And I was actually able to cop some this year. I didn't cop anything last year, although I didn't, again, get these ones. But anyway, what do you guys think about the retro? Uh, I think it's pretty awesome. I'll be looking for a pair in my size eventually, just because it's nice to have. The originals, I would love to keep these in this shape, which is kind of used or whatever, but I would love to keep them in this shape instead of just keep beating them up. I'd love to have a retro pair to just beat up. That way I can have the OG and the retro. Uh, and uh, I think it'd be cool. But uh, what, uh, But leave a comment, let me know what you guys think. If you guys wanna buy a pair of these, I'll link them in the description to like eBay and stuff. But uh, but I think it's cool that, uh, that they ended up releasing them. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the quick little comparison between the two. Cause again, very, very similar, man. Very, 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 very similar. And uh, that's what we have. Thank you to my buddy, Sean, again, for letting me borrow his pair. Uh, much, much appreciated. And hopefully you guys have a good rest of the day. And hopefully we'll see you back for some more videos soon. All right, peace guys.